Okay, this is my quiver that I use um, all the time. I'm, I'm using this every day. And uh, you can tell by how dirty it is. And I have it on laying on the bed, so don't tell my wife. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to show this to you. And originally, when I made this quiver, I didn't have this tail on it. Okay? It was just, uh, it was just this. Okay, just a quiver there. And it worked really good. And what I was doing, I was coming back and I was tucking my into my bow case here in my belt. And uh, when I needed a little bit more extra stability, I would uh, put the back of my bow case in the belt. So, um, but I started doing some research and I noticed that a lot of the Comanche quivers, again, not all of them, but a lot of them had this tail. Comanche style quivers had this tail in. Some of them was um, hooked in about right here. Some of them was hooked on the top with with beadwork around it. Uh, some of them uh, were just made out of one hide, and they just put a strip of the hide, the rest of the hide coming down. They had uh, various different ways they did it. So I decided to go ahead and I, I attached this, this piece of brain tan um, on the top of my quiver. And man, did it make a difference. It, it was night and day. Um, one of the main things is that I could pull this, when I tuck this in my belt, I can pull this all the way down to my belt. So it, it really holds this quiver exactly where it needs to be. And uh, but it also frees up frees up the mouth here, so you would have no issue uh, of pulling broadheads out or any other point uh, that you happen to have on the end of your arrow. It uh, it just frees that up. Where when I had my case around it, it was it was smashing that in tight, and um, and it also eliminated the need for me to use the uh, other end of my bow case and tucking it in my belt. Uh, I, I don't have I don't have to do that anymore. And uh, so it was just better all the way around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna make a new quiver and um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and make the tail into the quiver. I'm gonna use a whole hide and come up and just let the end of the side come on down to make the to make the quiver. Uh, I'm going to make the boss a little different. This uh, stick right here it comes down, comes through here, um, is major with mounted archery. You you need to have this in mounted archery. If not, your as you you run your 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 um, quiver will actually. Like when your, your horse is on the up stroke, coming down, the quiver will do this. And what happens is your arrows are doing that inside and it'll work up. If you have really short points, it'll just work up like that all the way to the end until they, they pop out of the end of your quiver. So this is major, okay? You gotta have some kind of stiffening rod. But the thing is, is if you don't have a stick, if you don't have uh, something on the end your uh, points will eventually start working out of the end of your, you know, will punch through the bottom of your um, quiver. So what I did was I used this kind of an oblong one and uh, I just uh, had where a branch came out and I cut the, the trunk and then I heated it and bent it like I wanted it. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is on this next one, I think I'm gonna try to use a round boss. And what I mean is that I'm gonna have the stick coming down here and I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna do this round on the bottom and uh, see how that works. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna bring y'all with me uh, 
through the process of building these quivers um, from from hide from the time my uncle killed this deer harvested this deer I skin it and put it straight into the water and started and started the process and uh, I'm not going to show you any of the hunting because I didn't videotape it maybe maybe one of these days we can do that but uh, but from from raw hide from the green hide all the way to this quiver. I'm going to show you the process that I go through getting my uh, brain tan and making all of my equipment. Okay, my uncle had harvested this deer about, oh, about a week ago. And um, I've been having it in this water. And what I'm doing is waiting for the hair to slip. What it is, is uh, it is breaking down, starting to decay, basically, uh, in this water here. And um, I don't want it to go too far, but I want it to go far enough. I don't want it to start stinking, basically. But I want to get it to where the... Uh, the hair will slip off of it. Now it's been uh, in the 30s at night and 70s during the day, so it's it's taken longer uh, than what it normally would uh, in warmer temperatures. So if you're if you're in cooler temperatures, it's it's going to take a little longer. It might take up to a week uh, or more uh, in warmer temperatures. It, it's I've had them the next day. Uh, the hair will be slipping off of them. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to test this. And what I'm going to do, I go ahead and I change the water about every other day or so. so I'm going to dump this water out. Now, I'm just going to test it. And what I'm doing, I'm just going to smell it. And uh, it still doesn't, it doesn't stink. It smells like a freshly... Uh, cleaned animal so uh, it's not it's not decaying too bad I got this rock on it to kind of hold it down but you see how it's, it's really is just starting the hair is just starting to slip I can pull on it starting to come off but it's not quite there yet um, as you can see I, I'm, I'm getting some but I'm having to really pull on it so what I'm going to do is is let it go another day. Now I don't I don't want it to get to where you just grab it and it just falls out. Okay, like that. Well, let's see. I may need to see how that's turning loose right there, real easy. Uh, I take back what I just said. I am going to go ahead and. Uh, flesh this hide out and scrape it uh, right now because that's that's what you want you see how this is just coming out it's kind of tough in some places but in other places it's just coming out real easy like this uh, that's what you're looking for if you let it get go longer than that it'll it'll start to smell it'll start decaying and uh, you don't want that uh, if you do let it go a little long, it's not, it's not just terribly bad, but, um, this is just about right, man. It's not quite, it's not quite there in some places, but it's there right, right here it is. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and scrape it. And we'll see what happens. I wanted to show y'all what exactly what I'm doing here. Do you see this little part right here that's a little lighter than say this part and up through here? All this whole hide has to look like this little section here. You need to scrape all of this stuff right here off. If you don't, you'll never get the hide soft 
um, it won't be flexible. So uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to do both sides of the hide and uh, I'll get back with you. Okay, so this is the hide after I scraped it. I kind of got ahead of myself and I put it, uh, I put the soak in and I forgot to uh, video. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I took it back out and what I normally do is after I scrape it, I'll, uh, I'll hang it like this if it's still wet and uh, let it dry about halfway and um, then stretch it just with by hand. Just take my hand and stretch it and uh, and then put it in the, in the solution. Now this, what this is, is this is a dozen egg yolks and one brain and I got a little squirt of just a little bit of cooking oil like maybe two tablespoons maybe and uh, I just kind of pour it in there and then um, a little squirt of Dawn dishwashing detergent. Just kind of break up the oil a little bit. But um, so, and then I mix all that together. Now, you can, you don't have to put eggs and brain in it. You can do just brain or you can do just the egg yolks. Uh, if you don't have the brains, you could do, you could use either one independently of each other. But uh, I like to put them both in there just to make sure I have enough. And what I do is I'll I'll mix that up, then I'll put the hide in there and get it all over that hide real good. And uh, and then uh, after I get it on there real good, I'll uh, fill it up. Got me a fly, decided to get him a drink. Get him out of there. Oh well, he's done. But I'll fill it up, as you can see, till it's just just over the top of this hide and uh there he is get him out of there i'll fill him up just till it's just over the top of this hide and uh that way it's the the solution is still good and concentrated and then i'll put a few rocks on top of it just to uh hold the hide down under the water and then i'll let it set most of the time I'm, um, I'll scrape, you know, hides all day. And then in the afternoon, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and put them in the solution. But, um, what I'm going to do, I've got to work in the morning. So, uh, I'm just going to, it's about 12 o'clock right now. I'll probably get home from the ranch about one or two. And then I'll start, uh, I'll take it out and wring it out and start on it. But, uh, I just, uh. Just to give you a kind of timeline, it doesn't matter how long you let it soak. You can let it soak a couple of hours, a few hours on up to to uh, as long as you want. You just don't want it to uh, to start stinking. You don't you don't want to leave it in there two days. You know what I mean? But uh, okay, see you when I get back tomorrow.